What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Happy New Year to all of our listeners. Yes, uh, Happy New Year. New Year was last week, as of this well, as of this recording. It's today. It's today, but it, but no, when this goes up, last week it'd be last week. So Happy New Year to everyone. It is also the twenty fifth episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast. Yeah, number twenty five. Number twenty five. Sammy, you want to give the people, the audience, the idea you gave to me last week? Yeah. So I told them uh, we would do um, this one um, episode where. We would uh, play rock, paper, scissors for 25 minutes. That's it. And you can't even see it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I thought, wouldn't it be a cool idea if we went through our top 25 horror movies? Um, oh, yeah. Individually. Um, and maybe a couple, couple comments on why each one of those. Oh, yeah. You already told me why your 25 was 25, and I was kind of <laughs> laughing about that. But uh, I'll let you start since this was your idea for this episode, the 25th anniversary. But before we begin... I'd like to give a special shout out to our boys over at Shutter, hooking the fans up with the free 14-day free trial of their service. You sign up using promo code Mindless, you get a 14-day free trial of Shutter, the ultimate horror streaming service where they've shown a lot of good classics over the last couple of months, from Stephen King to original content and everything in between. Sign up right now using promo code MINDLESS for a 14-day free trial. That is Shudder.com. Let's sign up using promo code MINDLESS. So, Sammy, you want to get us going with our top 25 list? Yeah, so I'll, what I think we'll do is I'll go through my 25 to 10, or, or 25 to 11, and maybe we'll go back and forth on, like, our top 10s. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. For sure. Um, so I'll start with um, a couple honorable mentions here. Because I ended up having 28 movies after I was like looking up like a bunch of different horror movies on Google and stuff. By the way, before you start, you're going to probably hear some crunchiness in the background of the audio, and that's just me eating cookies. So Yeah, Go ahead. definitely. Um, so I'll start with uh, a couple honorable mentions of some movies I've seen, and they just didn't make the top 25 after all. Uh, Candyman. I watched that one way back. Um, it was a movie that I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot I watched that one. <laughs> and that was a different uh, horror t- type horror movie. Um, another one, uh, House of Wax with Paris Hilton. Uh, that's another, like, movie that I, I Was watched. that the one with, uh, Sam from Supernatural 2? It might have been. I don't remember. That one, I have a vague memory it's of like watching that one. like 2000, what, like 3 or 4 or something? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'm only giving these honorable mentions because I'm very bad at remembering what movies I've seen. And since I haven't seen a lot of horror movies, as you'll find out, because there's going to be a couple in here and you're like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and then Night of the Living Dead, I think, is my last honorable mention. I think the original one. I was going to put that one up here a little bit higher, but I was like, I think I'm only doing that because it has a special place in my heart um, since it was one of the first theater shows I did. Um, so I was like, I don't know. I think I'm substituting my feelings for the theater production in place of... Now, did you movie. watch that movie to get prepared for your role in there, or no? No, I wasn't. I wasn't acting in it. I did technical work on it, but it was more of just a like a movie I had seen. And I was like, okay, like maybe if I can't find something to fill these last couple spots. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, let me unlock my phone here. Should have wrote it down like a smart person. I guess from there, I think I'll do a couple honorable mentions. Oh, right, go for it! Yeah, go for it. Um, The Dark Tower, highly underrated. Uh, came out, I think, in like 2017. But that was a pretty good one. It's a Stephen King classic. It, it wasn't really too much horror, but if you read the book, it's more horror. But uh, Stephen King's The Dark Tower is pretty good. I enjoyed that one. Uh, the Predator, uh, the new 2018 one, was uh, it was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it at least that much. Uh, and because these two were franchises i didn't want to like put them throughout my list but i'm gonna go for the entire also the entire predator franchise and the entire alien franchise because those things are just each movie for some reason it didn't get better each movie but like you just felt the alien vibe in it so definitely yeah those are good some real good honorable mentions there and you know i think we've discussed alien predator on the uh, the first podcast i was on yeah um so i'll start with my 25 and share the little story i gave to tony <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go with Drag Me to Hell is my number 25. It's a movie that came out in the 2000s. Real Sam good. Sam Raimi, Evil Dead. Yeah. Um, that movie was really interesting. I mean, it was probably one of the first times I went to a movie theater by myself without my mom. Um, and I went with my sister and her friends. Yeah. Um, fun tidbit on this movie that I think kind of makes it more memorable 
is I saw it at this really cheap theater, and one of my friends had stepped out to go use the restroom, and when they came back, they were, like, whispering to us, like, don't look back, guys, don't look back, and I was like, why? Why can't I look back? They're like, someone's having sex. I was like, uh... Uh, I was like 11, maybe 12 at the time, and I was like, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> this is weird. So that's why that movie's so memorable to you? Yeah, definitely. And I think the ending was very memorable, too. Like, I forget what exactly happens at the end, but, like, I remember, like, I left that theater kind of like, oh, wow. She gets dragged to hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The she ends up getting dragged to hell after, like, yeah. everything she did to After try to stop it. Everything she been through, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I think my next one's going to be Don't Breathe. I don't know if anyone's seen that one. That's a good one. I've seen that one. They're making a sequel to that, actually. Are they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one, I don't know if I would consider that one. That was more of a suspenseful movie. It was horror. Blumhouse did it. Oh, did Blumhouse do it? Yep. Yeah, that one was pretty sick. I watched it once, and I probably wouldn't watch it again, so that's why it's kind of lower on my list. Yeah. Um. Next up would be, uh, at 23, uh, The Cabin in the Woods. That's a good one. That is a really good movie. Um, it's a movie that... I, I left after, I, I remember I watched that one, I, I was working at the movie theaters during that time when that came out, so it was like 2013, mm-hmm. um, and I just watched that one because I was like, oh, like I heard, like I like to watch whatever movies were coming out during that time, so if someone asked me, like, oh, what did you hear about this movie, I'd be like, oh, I heard this or this, you know, or I seen this or whatever, mm-hmm. um, so I watched it, and I was kind of like, I didn't like the ending. Um, the ending was interesting because I wanted more after that. Yeah, um, what I did like is how it combined a few different movies together, kind of. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have that evil dead essence and a few other different things in there. Yeah, the vibe of the woods and the yeah. cabin in the woods. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Joss Whedon helped do that, the guy who did Avengers, and that's why Chris Hemsworth was in it. Yeah, yeah, definitely Chris Hemsworth in it. Which he has is the funniest death in there, though. It was great. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, coming up next... Um, well, that was 23, right? Yeah. Yeah, so number 22 here. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 2004 or 3 or 3. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's going to come up there next for me. Um, that was what I remember watching that movie because uh, one of my friends, he was uh, he dressed as Leatherface that year, and so we watched it around Halloween time. Yeah. Um, I was really shook by that movie. Especially because, like, they say it's, like, based on a true story. Yeah. Um, I know the story behind it. It's it's not It's as loosely based on a true story. Loosely, yeah, because the real guy in real life, he was um, a cannibal, and I think the only people he killed was his mom and his dad, and I think he was also gay in real life. Yeah, so that movie was really good. Especially, it left me with, like, a feeling of horror. Like, what if that happened to me? Like, I kind of don't want to be in Texas. Like, what if that happens when I'm driving? Yep. Um, and so that was pretty sick. Um, and just like how cool Leatherface is mm-hmm. in general, the way he just like appears out of nowhere, and that was pretty sick. Um, next up is going to be Carrie, the original 1976 version. Stephen King classic. Yeah, that movie was really good. It was really awkward too. I have a fun story for that one too. I watched that movie with my mom. Yeah. Um, and if you're familiar with that movie, uh, in the beginning, there's a lot of just like boobs. Yeah, because she's in the shower. Yeah. I was just like, oh, this is weird. Uh, like, I'm watching this with my mom. <laughs> that's a class. Uh, fun fact, actually, too, if you're interested. Yeah. Hulu's Castle Rock, she's actually one of the main characters in that. Is she? Yeah. Um, that's pretty sick. Um, and then number 20 here, we have uh, the original Insidious. Yep. Uh, I'll combine it um, with Insidious 1, 2, and 3 at this point. Kind of like the, the John or 4. I don't know how many there is. Well, one and two are kind of one movie in a way. Three is a prequel, and then four is a prequel too. Yeah, I'll put them together. Just the Insidious series in general. Franchise. Yeah, they're really good movies in my opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, they got me with a couple jump scares. James Wan. Can't James go wrong Wan. With James Wan. Yeah, definitely. Uh, those movies were pretty fun. Uh, coming up after that at nineteen, we have The Purge. Okay. I've only seen the original Purge, so I'm not going to put the entire Purge series. Yeah. Um, in this one. I've only saw the original one. That one was pretty sick because I was kind of thinking, like, what if that did happen? Like, how would that play out? Mm-hmm. Would I go out and try to, like, commit crime? Or would I be the guy that kind of stays in trying to stay away from everything? Mm-hmm. It didn't take long for me to conclude that I'd be the guy that's trying to stay in. <laughs> I'd be scared to go out. 
Um, next up, we have Final Destination 3, which is one of the few Final Destinations I've seen. I, uh... It's because of that movie I'm legitimately terrified of roller coasters. I'll still get on them and everything, but I just, I'm terrified of them. Yeah, definitely. That movie is terrifying. I, I love how it kind of plays out with this whole, like, they survive, and but then they end up dying, like, which is really funny to me. Yeah, that was uh, cool, especially with The Final Destination. That was supposed to be the last one, I think, in the franchise. Uh, that was a prequel, and then, like, the way that it is, the way Final Destination 1 started. Yeah. They were, like, on the plane and everything, so I thought that was cool. Yeah. Uh, then we'll have 10 Cloverfield Lane. Not my favorite of the Cloverfield ones. Definitely not my favorite of the Cloverfield. Um, I didn't see the newest one that came out last year. Cloverfield Paradox. I didn't see Paradox. But I did see the other Cloverfield. And you'll, you'll see I was that literally one. about to say, that just came out this year. But yeah, now we're in 2019. Yeah, that's why I had to make sure to say last year. <laughs> uh, so, that was there. Um, I think that one doesn't have a lot of horror elements. It has a very much like drama movie, but then it kind of gets there towards the end, the last like, yeah. 10, 15 minutes. Um, then we're going to go with the original slasher here, Scream. Scream. Yes. Scream's Ooh, a good one. I love that movie. Yep. Um, real fun. So these are the movies now that I'm kind of getting into, like, that I'm more enjoying. Yeah. Not like I was kind of scrambling to put a movie in there. Wes Craven, man. Wes Craven's fucking yeah i love when the more genius you know you have the lady that gets stuck in the garage you just have two people playing um, yeah uh, fun fact too about that uh they do nod a nightmare on elm street in there uh in the beginning when he's talking to uh drew barrymore's character he calls yeah. and says uh what's your favorite horror movie and he goes oh a nightmare on elm street or something he goes yeah the first one's good but the sequel sucked that was basically Wes craven saying that yeah my movie was good the rest of them sucked yeah so that's that was, funny that's pretty good yeah all right, next up on the list, we have The Exorcist coming in at uh, number 15. Wow, that's pretty, um, number 15, huh? Yeah, I, I'm just saying this one's a little bit, it could have, you know, it could have been a little bit higher, but I was kind of like, man, I don't know where to put this one. Yeah. Uh, I think overall it's a good film, but in terms of my, like, movies I would watch and, like, enjoy. It wouldn't be one of those. It's not up there. It's because it's the... Yeah, I mean, I can see how a lot of, a lot of people are like that. Like, I've seen it once, seen it twice, and I was like, oh, this is good. Yeah. But it's not one of those horror movies that I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch again. Yeah. Um, uh, number... 14. 14, The Sixth Sense. <sighs> yeah, I guess you can consider that a horror movie, yeah. Definitely. I did look. I did three different Google searches. M. Night Shyamalan. Yes. I love that movie. Love the turn. I see dead people. I see dead people. The twist. Yeah. Super good. Bruce Willis. Can't go wrong. Bruce Willis. Good actor. Good movie right there. Uh, coming up next, uh, Child's Play. Child's Play, the original. They're remaking that. Yeah. And it's getting a TV show. Oh, it's going to be a TV show as well. Getting a TV show. Universal, I think, is doing the TV show. And I think like Miramax or someone got the rights to it. But they're not, they're not calling them good guy dolls anymore. Huh. They're calling them, uh, what are they? I forget the name, but if, they, if you guys remember, leave it in the comments below. Yeah. All right, here we go. This one, you, maybe some people will get upset about. At what number? 12? This is 12. Shaun of the Dead. Hell no. Nah. Shaun of the Dead's great, dude. I know, but I know people may be like, well, that's kind of more of a comedy, but I... It's a horror. It's, it's a, a comedy it's making a horror. fun of horror. Yeah. I, so, I love Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead's great, dude. Um, which is super, super funny. Um, one of those movies that I can watch and laugh at. Yeah. Um, num number coming in here at uh, number 11, as mentioned, a little bit previously, Cloverfield. Cloverfield, the first one. Yeah. Cloverfield's great. Super Especially good. Especially with that monster. Yeah. Super and good. that's your 11. Uh, that's 11. Yep. Can't even speak today. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm going to go with my number 25, starting in here at uh, Hereditary. That movie kind of blew me away. I saw that in theaters, and I was just kind of shocked as to how good it was. It, you know, it's an, an indie kind of film by an indie company, A24, up-and-coming company, that's been making a lot of good blockbusters lately. And um, Hereditary just kind of blew me away as to the symbolism in it and just, you know, stuff that being. So, yeah, Hereditary is number 25. And also, for anyone wondering, I believe it's either on Netflix or Hulu. Hereditary? Yeah. Is it already? Yeah. I I, don't I get my streaming Netflix. services mixed up. I think maybe Hulu. I get them all mixed up because... You have them both. I have, I have like that one Amazon and Amazon Prime. Yeah. And so usually before bed, I just put one of them on and I scroll through. So I, I kind of forget which ones. Yeah. So if I mention a streaming service, it's probably one of those three. Yeah. Uh, number 24. And this is going to be kind of a, 
a shock because I just watched it on Friday, and I, that's why it's already on my list because I thought it was really good. Uh, Bird Box. Bird Box just came out on Netflix, uh, I think, a month ago. I think it just came out over. Or, actually, no, two weeks ago. Yeah, it came out during Christmas like time. Like two weeks ago, yeah. And uh, I had finally gotten the opportunity to watch it after seeing all the memes on the internet and everything. So I finally got an opportunity to watch it. And uh, I, I must say it is a really good movie. Um, I do like the premise behind it. It's really cool. And uh, the only thing that pisses me off is this is the one thing everyone is noticing Sandra Bullock for. Like, she's been around for in Hollywood for so long. And this movie came out, and now everybody just started taking notice to her. I'm just like, dude, Sandra Bullock's been an OG actor for, like, the longest. And you guys are just taking notice yeah. to that now? It's like, really? Come on. It's Miss Congeniality. Yeah. She's the heat. Come on. With freaking, uh, what's her name? Melissa McCarthy, where they're the cops. Yeah. She's got, a, she's got so many good films. She's got such a resume on her, dude. Like, I, I just was yeah. kind of mad about that. I, and fun fact about Bird Box, I think it was the most streamed movie, movie on uh, Netflix over, I think, in 2018. And over any seven day period. That shows you how much that. Uh, if, if they're saying about 2018, that shows you what a freaking week period can do. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, number 23 uh, is going to be the first, uh, not the first Purge, the very first movie, The Purge. Um, and, you know, I, I like the aspect of uh, in each movie you got to see something different. So, in the first movie, you got to see how the rich were in their homes. Um,. And in this one, you got to see, uh, you know, Ethan Hawke, of course, is in there. Um, and they all they were doing is trying to survive the night when the sun opens up the door, of course, and lets the guy in. And then the the other rich kids come and try to get the guy back and all that. But, uh, yeah. I think this number 22 is going to go to the first purge. And I have a uh, pamphlet here from Halloween Horror Nights that they were giving out for the first purge maze. Definitely. Called the uh, Staten Island Experiment. That's what they were calling it before the purge. Um in the first purge, I saw. I went to the premiere for that movie, not knowing it was the premiere. I just got free tickets to go to see the movie, and <laughs> it happened to be the premiere. Like all the producers were there, the actors were there. It was like a month before the movie came out, so I got to see like the month, the movie, the month ahead. That's pretty sick. And I remember when it was on commercials and seeing it on TV and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I saw that movie. I can tell you what happens at the end. <laughs> but uh, no, I never told anybody what happened at the end, so it was, it was pretty cool. Coming to number 21, a classic, a Nightmare on Elm Street. Definitely uh, classic. Yeah, Wes Craven classic. Uh, uh, rest in peace, Wes Craven. That guy's passed away. But, uh, yeah, he made a lot of good horror movies. And uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, he's going to be known for for probably his career. That kinda, I think that was kind of like what really took his career off right there. Yeah, definitely. That's one movie I think I left off my list on accident. On accident. How dare you. Coming at number 20 is going to be his other uh, brilliant film, Scream. Um, Scream was one of those movies where it was a, a good slasher film. And it had a good twist at the end. Um, I, I, wanna, I, I think that movie just turned like 25 recently, too, or something wow. like that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, congratulations on that. Two big horror movies turned uh, another year old, huh? 45th anniversary of Exorcist, 25th anniversary of Scream. Damn. Uh, Friday the 13th, part two, coming at number 19. Now, I wonder, a lot of, I, I was kind of getting stuck between part two and one. Uh, one, really, you don't see Jason until the very end of the movie. Yeah. Because, the, of course, the killer in the first one is the mom. But in Friday the 13th Part 2, you start seeing Jason doing a lot of the killing, and that's kind of like his revenge kind of throughout the whole entire movie for his mom. And that's why I think I like Part 2 a little bit better than Part 1, because you're seeing kind of Jason take uh, revenge for his mother's death. So, Number 18 is coming to Halloween 2. Um, the sequel to the, the 1977 or 1978 classic Halloween um, was really good. That didn't come out until I think 1981. Um, so people had to wait a couple years for a sequel, but it finally came out. So it's not it's not H2O, right? Not H2O. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Halloween 2, uh, you know, follows Laurie Strode after the events of Halloween 1 in the hospital. Michael Myers is still not done and goes after her and... Uh, tries to kill her, but ends up going on a killing spree in that little hospital, killing a lot of people. Uh, Loomis comes to save the life of Ken again. Um, the guy who played Loomis, I cannot remember his name, but I think it's uh, Donald something. But uh, he's such a good actor. They kind of mentioned him in the new Halloween movie, which was pretty cool. They give him that. That's nice. Uh, number 17, Texas Chainsaw Re Massacre, the original one. From, I think, 1970-something. 74, oh, maybe? 74, yeah. Uh, when that movie came out, it was very controversial. Uh, you know, no, no one's ever kind of seen something like that. And when it came out, it was kind of... It was talking a lot. It had people talking and stuff. 
You sure you don't like the 3D one? Oh, Texas Chainsaw. That was horrible. <laughs> um, but uh, I think what's most memorable for this movie about me was the fact that at the very end of the movie, they show an, uh, supposedly, I think it is, an actual clip of what happened in real life from a reporter going into the house. And you see like a real quick snip of Leatherface. And forever that will go down in my head. Like that was pretty scary. Like the fact that someone actually caught that on camera and stuff like that. I thought that was the 2004 one. No, I think that was, that was the original. Because I, I, I remember the uh, the guy uh, talking about uh, the narrator from the first one. Oh. The Texas Chainsaw. You know, he does. he's got his most memorable voice and stuff like that. But um, they show it. Uh, number, you know, you might be right. I mean, we'll find out right now after. The with the with the cop, cop going down like the stairs. Uh, I I know it was like a news reporter and a guy, a camera guy, and they were trying to like look at some stuff, and they were like in a basement, and then yeah, sudden, I think that was I think that was a two thousand three one. Yeah, I don't. Oh, maybe they did it in both. Probably. Uh, the Purge election year coming at number sixteen. Uh, I love the Purge franchise. Um, election year was good because it was a follow up for Anarchy. But in this one, you got to see Frank uh, Grillo's character. Uh, he was a security guard for a uh, senator who's trying to become president to stop the purge. And, of course, the Founding Fathers do not like this. So they try to send out and kill her. Where, like previous purges, there were so many rules as to you couldn't have weapons class 5 or higher or something like that. You couldn't kill personnel that were class 5 and higher. And in this purge, they let any pretty much weapon and anyone was uh able to be killed so you could have killed presidents you know stuff like that oh wow i didn't know that there was rules yeah so uh in, in previous purges you know like anyone who was like government presidents anything uh you couldn't kill them but in this purge movie they allowed it just because they wanted to try to get that senator out of the race and have her dead oh wow so yeah uh number 15 is gonna go to purge anarchy now anarchy i think is probably my favorite out of the purge franchises because um anarchy was like the first one we saw them outside which i felt was really cool we got to see a new perspective of the purge and we got to see what people really like um outside of their homes the people who actually like to participate and stuff like that plus frank grillo guy's a freaking badass dude the guys play crossbones in freaking civil war huh. so <laughs> uh number 14 is gonna go to Zombieland. Oh, that's a great pick. I think I forgot that one, too. Zombieland is good. Uh, Zombieland, honestly, uh, is one of those uh, survival kind of uh, <laughs> zombie movies where you, you watch and you listen to the rules, see the rules, and you see how other people live and stuff like that. And I just think it was really cool. They're supposed to be making a sequel to that, and it's supposed to be, I think, coming out this year. Oh, wow. I think. Uh, so that should be cool. And all the original cast is coming back. Oh, that's great. So that's going to be cool. Number 13 is going to go to the infamous Steven Spielberg classic, Jaws. Um, that was probably one of the first shark movies, I think, ever uh, yeah. to kind of set the pathway for shark movies in the future, which not all of them are really good. The Meg being horrible. As we talked about that like 15 minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so I, I think Jaws, though, just redefined a whole uh, new era of uh, cinematography as well because the way that movie was shot, the behind the scenes stories of how disastrous that movie was to film cost them a year of production just to film because they were having so much problems with the shark out in the ocean and stuff like that but um it's just an all out phenomenal movie i actually the last year got to see it in theaters when they brought it back for an anniversary over the summer yeah so that was really cool um number 12 army of darkness part of the evil dead trilogy uh, Army of Darkness follows Ash as he travels through the medieval times through a teleporter back that he witnessed in Evil Dead 2 in the cabin, and it takes him back to medieval times uh, thanks to the Necronomicon. Um, but it, it's just that one was probably the funniest out of the series. Um, Evil Dead 2 is where they really started doing the comedy aspect of Evil Dead, and then Army of Darkness was straight up just funny. So, uh, And then number 11 is going to go the original Evil Dead because the Evil Dead 1 is probably... Uh, gonna go down in history as one of the greatest horror movies of all time um it was just something different from its time and uh it used to scare the shit out of people when it first came out and they actually went in 2013 we made it made it like really scary of how it was should have been um but nonetheless evil dead one is really good uh all right now we're back to our top 10 yeah so do you want to hit yours with your 10 first and i'll go after yeah definitely i think uh i'll hit with 10 here um, it's a movie you mentioned just previously a few seconds ago. Uh, we got Jaws. Jaws. Can't go wrong. He got a John Williams uh, score. Um, yep. So I love John Williams. Mm -hmm. um, you got Spielberg. It's it's a good movie. Good movie. Yeah. Better than The Meg. Better than The Meg. Uh, my number 10 
Evil Dead 2. Now, the sequel being because that Evil Dead, uh, we started exploring more of Ash's uh, movie and uh, the fact that it went towards more of a comedy aspect in this one, and you saw him going crazy and stuff like that, and we got the birth of the chainsaw hand and the, the double-barreled shotgun, his infamous weapon, so Evil Dead 2 is probably pretty amazing. Uh, at 9 here for me, I have uh, the original Halloween 1978. Nice. Um, I just like the idea of Michael Myers and the way he scares people. I think I was pretty scared of that movie growing up. Yeah. Um, so much so that um, one of my uh, my great grandma's neighbor growing up, uh, he used to dress as Michael Myers for Halloween, and one Halloween I like completely just froze. Froze. Froze <laughs> with fear, huh? Yeah. Uh, coming in number nine on my list is the The Shining with Jack Nicholson. Yeah, great. That is one of the most iconic horror movies of all time. Um, uh, just the story arc to it and stuff like that. I uh, love the setting of the hotel, um, the characters, characterization and everything, the setup. Uh, and there's still so many questions to that movie to this day as to uh, what that ending picture means. Yeah. Uh, there's so many theories online, but one of my favorite theories is that uh, Jack Torrance has probably been dead the entire time, but he just takes on different people, entities, to uh, complete his work and stuff like that as to killing. Another good theory is that... Uh, at a certain point in the movie, we get teleported into his book, and what we're seeing at the end of him going crazy is actually his book. Oh, wow. So that's another good theory. But so many theories, uh, such a cult classic, and, yeah, love The Shining. Yeah, that's one movie I, I've seen parts of, but I don't think I've ever watched the whole thing. Whole thing. Um, so. I'm sensing a live stream <laughs> one month. <laughs> um, I think a number eight here for me. Uh, maybe I mentioned that I didn't put this movie on there. I forget. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I think I said that, but... It, I skimmed over my list incorrectly. Okay. Um, that's that's up there. Um, I liked one of the remakes, and I forget what year the remake came out, and I couldn't find 2010 it. 2010 or 2012, 2011? I don't know. It was super. It was funny. Like, Freddy makes me laugh. She's, yeah. his, just the way he talks and stuff, and I love the way he just plays with people. Plays with people. Uh, coming at number eight for me is going to be the original It uh, from, I think, the 1990s. It was a TV movie. With Tim Curry playing uh, the infamous Pennywise. But I think just for me, like much like Freddie with you, his version of Pennywise, he just makes me laugh. And the, some of the stuff he just said, uh, how evil he was towards the kids, it, it was just an all out really good movie. So, yeah. All right. Coming in at uh, this is seven. Seven. Yeah. Uh, the Amleyville Horror, the remake. I forget what year that one came out. It came out in the 2000s, I believe. Yeah. Uh, that's another one of those movies that. I watched as a child. That's probably one of the first scary movies I watched as a child. And that one, like, got me. Because I was like, what if that happens to, like, my parents? Like, <laughs> what if we move somewhere and, like, the house, like, takes over? Dude, I know, right? <laughs> um, coming to number seven for me, the 2017 It. Okay. It was good. Uh, I liked it out a lot more, obviously, than the original. Because uh, it was stuck more to the book. And um, it was just all scary. I love the scariness of it. It was awesome. And I, and I really think they did a good job on it. Definitely. Um, number six for me here. I'm going to go with Zombieland. Zombieland. Love that movie. It's funny. has just great moments throughout. Great moments. Great cast. Yeah. Bill Bill Murray's probably the best part, too. Yeah. I You know, I just know better. Double tap. Double tap. You got Woody Harrelson playing a cocky character. Yeah. You got uh, Jesse Eisenberg in there. You got Emma Stone. I forget who Little Rock's name is in real life, but you got her in there too. She's a good actress. Yeah. Uh, number six for me, a uh, movie that stole the year for me, I think, last year, uh, Halloween 2018. Halloween 2018, the direct sequel to Halloween 1978, which they erased all the rest of the slate and just went from Halloween 78 to Halloween 2018. Um, an amazing sequel, nonetheless. Um, they did it right. This is probably what Michael Myers should have been. Uh, all along, this is how I think he should have, you know, been been made as a character. And I think, he, and all in all, it was just a fantastic movie between all the kills, um, bringing back a lot of the old story arcs, uh, doing a lot of references to the old movies and stuff like that. So I, I thought it was really good. Definitely, I think, um, you know, because I I was a follower of this channel prior to you know joining on the podcast. Now, um, that's one movie I, I was watching you just literally gaga over. Yeah, um, when we were doing the podcast very early on, me and George, 
we would uh, like almost every week there'd be Halloween news when they were filming this movie, and we would cover it and just talk about it. And yeah. We knew it was going to be something good. So. Yeah, definitely. And that's one movie I wanted to watch, and I, I maybe I mentioned this on the podcast. I forget, but I just couldn't find anyone to watch it with me. Live I know. <laughs> maybe it's going to be live stream. Ah. Um, so we'll see what's up there. Um, number five for me here is the uh, the ring. The ring. Great film. Seven days, just the creepiness of the creepiness, the, the, the freaking videotape, and yeah. the way she looks. Yeah, I hated the I hated the newest remake of it. Oh yeah, where it went like viral and stuff like that. Yeah, that was, was so like, stupid. That's dumb. Yeah, just took over a plane. And I was like, what the hell? Yeah, no, I love the original though. Original's good. Uh, number five for me is gonna go to Halloween, nineteen seventy eight. The original Halloween. Uh, John Carpenter started a movie. Started a franchise that went down in history. Michael Myers, one of the most well-known serial killers in cinema history. Um, his iconic theme. You think Halloween season, you think of Michael Myers. Definitely. That's one thing that comes around. Um, but, you know, I, I'll watch it fucking 365 days a year because I love Michael Myers. one of the best uh, serial killers in cinema history. And, yeah, uh, such an iconic film with Jamie Lee Curtis. That's her first movie. Yeah. A lot of people know that. Uh, her first movie that got her a big break, and from then on, she became the new screen queen. Took the title right from her mom. Her mom being, of course, the infamous uh, shower victim in Psycho. Yeah, of course. So. You know, but I, we all know that uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's best role is in Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday. <laughs> all right, number four for me. This movie scared the bejesus out of me, and it continues to this day to scare the bejesus out of me. The Conjuring Two. Yes, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. That movie terrifies. That's your number four. <laughs> Terrifies me. Terrifying. The, was it The Nun? Yes. The Nun. My number four is going to be actually the first Conjuring film. Because uh, I think it was something that we needed right after Insidious. James Wan was just on a roll with these horror movies. Yeah. And when he brought The Conjuring to life and he got to share more of the Warrens, uh, you know, case files and stuff, I thought that was interesting. Uh, the Conjuring one, though, you know, you had that. It's about the witch, the possession of the witch and stuff like that. Yeah. And her. And uh, it had its moments. It really did. Uh, from that one scene where you see the freaking body just dangling from the tree to uh, there's a scene where she goes into the to the attic and you see the, the clapping game and stuff like yeah. that. So it has a lot of its moments, and, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that movie came out towards the end of my run at working on a movie theater. Yeah. I mean, the original Conjuring. Um, and I just was really kind of like, I don't want to clean up that theater. You don't want to? I didn't want to. Because usually you're cleaning up the theater and part of, you know, Marvel ruining it for everyone. Yeah. As the ending credits are playing. Yeah. And they just had a terrifying score. Yeah. And so I was like, I don't want to clean that theater alone. Yeah. Especially if it was in Theater 13. Yeah, yeah. Theater 13, I heard, is haunted. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a story for another time. Yeah, it was uh, ghost hunting. Uh, all right, we're at number three here. Number three, down to the last top three. Huh? Top three here. All right, this one's pretty scary for me as well. Um, it scared the bejesus out of me for a different reason. Conjuring 2 more for, like, angels, demons. This one just for the realistic part of it, The Strangers. Strangers. Yes, the good, original. Good movie. I seen. I, the only one I've seen is the sequel. Yeah, Pray, Pray at, at Night, Night yeah. and that was pretty good. I have not seen Pray at Night, but the original Strangers... Because you were home. Yeah. Just like wrong place, wrong time. Yep. And, uh, yeah, they were just killing for no reason. Yeah, and I, I, that's, you know, I was talking to Tony about this a bit ago. So one of the reasons why I never want to live in the middle of nowhere. Because you don't know who's going to come <laughs> up and just say it. Yeah. Yep. Because you were home. Uh, my number three is going to go to The Conjuring 2, and for the exact reason of The Nun and Annabelle. Um, they were just two terrifying characters. I mean, Annabelle's barely in the movie. I mean, she gets another cameo appearance in this movie, I think. Yeah. Uh, or they do mention her a little bit more um, in this movie as well. But nonetheless, uh, Conjuring 2 brought the nun uh, character and the uh, the wicked man, I think, or whatever. The tall toy. Oh, what's his name? I forget. His He's name. getting his own movie, though, uh, which I don't know why. But uh, but a lot of the aspects in this movie were cool, but that nun just kind of scared the crap out of me. And uh, I remember uh, which Annabelle was it? I think it was Annabelle Creation. I think it was the last movie. They did a post credit scene, and then it was found out that the nun was going to get her own movie. But it was like some, it was pretty scary. 
Um, but the nun just has that scary aspect uh, feeling to it, and it's just like, yeah. I don't want to be in the same room as her, huh? <laughs> nope. All right, number two for me um, is going to be Get Out. Get Out. Real good film. I just watched that one actually on Easter last year. Good movie. Real great Easter movie. Um, I but know, right? <laughs> that one's pretty sick just because it's like the build in it and the symbolism uh, behind the, it. The everything. Symbolism yeah. was super good. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, us. Us, yeah. Jordan Pill, man. And that's what I've been talking about my uncle for uh, last when, last week when I went down to visit him. Uh, what are with all these freaking comedy guys coming out and doing all these horror movies? Yeah. You got John Krasinski had a success at The Quiet Place. Danny McBride co-wrote Halloween, and that was a success. Jordan Peele wrote and direct Get Out. Yeah. And now he's doing us. Like, they, these are all good movies. What is it? I heard, though, if you can write comedy, you can write anything. Well, yeah. yeah I mean, it's one of the – in the theater world, one of the things is, you know – uh, you know, it, 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 to make people laugh is just super hard. Yeah. Um. So doing comedy is probably one of the hardest things to do. Yeah. And with horror, I guess it's the opposite. It's really easy to scare an audience these days, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that that's a good one. Get out. I remember watching that for the first time, and I was just like tripping out, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is a great movie." Um. But yeah, that was that was good, and that took the Academy Award for best adapted screenplay. That's true. So. Uh, that's that's good. Uh, my number two is going to The Exorcist because that is probably to this day one of the scariest movies of all time. Yeah. And I think we, we just talked about this last week um, for the 45th anniversary of what it scared us. So I'm not going to get into too much detail, but just the littlest things in that movie from the spider walk to her floating in the bed. From that time, that was not seen yet and stuff like that. And, and it was just insane um, just the way she looked and stuff like that. It was yeah. It was insane. All right, here we go. My number one. You mentioned this movie a few numbers earlier for you. Uh, we're going with It 2017. It 2017. I love that movie. It was a good movie. It's, it had scary moments, had jump moments, comedy moments. Yeah. The kids were just super relatable. Yeah. Um, and super fun to watch. And Chapter 2 comes out this year. I know. I'm super stoked. That's coming out in September. September. Yeah. yeah. I thought something I think we should probably do coming up, too, is uh, maybe look at uh, 2019, What's in State. What's, what's in store? What's in store for 2019? So there's a lot of good ones too. I saw already a lot of good, a good list of them. But um, ready for my number one? I'm always ready. Number one, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I know. I could have said this one. Uh, yeah, you know what? And uh, my viewers know this. A lot of people know this. Um, Eddie knows this. <laughs> Eddie uh, knows it very well. Eddie knows it very well. <laughs> um, but uh, in in 2018. I was extremely jealous when Orlando got a scare zone. Um, but what kept my hopes up was the fact that John Murdy at Midsummer Scream did say, you know, Orlando had the scare zone of Trick or Treat one year, and this year at Horror Nights in Hollywood, you're getting both a scare zone and a maze of that same exact property. He goes, so never say never about a property ever coming to Hollywood, which basically teased that we might be getting both a scare zone and a um, maze for Killer Clowns for Outer Space next year. Um, I don't know, man. There's just something about that movie that when I was a kid, it used to scare the shit out of me, and I, I just remember it vividly. as It was like a deep part of my childhood. Um, has one of the best scores ever in a horror movie. Uh, between the, the, It's mixing like kind of carny music with like heavy metal. Oh, really? If you ever listen to that score, it's just it's amazing. It's phenomenal. Then you got, the, of course, the original song uh, by the Dickies, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. The Dickies being an, an, an amazing, infamous punk band from like the 70s, 80s. Uh, and they did that song, and it's just amazing. Um, the clowns, for the time being, looked awesome. Uh, you know, the, the idea of, of aliens kind of disguising themselves as, as killer clowns and and having this tent spaceship and collecting cotton candy cocoons and having like a gun that shoots popcorn and <laughs> turns into like little killer clowns and stuff like that and you know they have the, the these balloon balls that fit people in them and eventually kill them and uh, acid pies it's just there's so many stupid but memorable stuff that makes this movie amazing it's a cult classic and I am excited to see what they have in store for the next movie sci-fi picked up the rights to it to try to make I think a sequel um, and I heard the the brothers are coming back to uh, to make it again, and I cannot be uh, excited for that. I think they're also going to be taking the movie on tour, where they have uh, 
a live score going by the oh, guy wow. who, who scored the movie. They have a live orchestra going, playing along with the movie and stuff. And that's been becoming a, a thing lately where, like, a lot of those movies are coming back to, like, concerts and stuff. So they get, like, a live score going with the movie. So you get to hear the music live and watch the movie at the same time. Yeah, that's, it's super cool. It's yeah. something I want to do. With, it is something I want to do, too, because they did it for... Uh, they do it with Star Wars a lot. They did it for Star Wars. They, I know they did it for Game of Thrones. Yeah. Game of Thrones at the Forum. Uh, it was called Game of Thrones in Concert. Um, John Williams just does a concert of all his stuff. Yeah. So does uh, John Carpenter. Oh, does he? John Carpenter does a concert, and then, um, and I know they do. Uh, what's another big one? Uh, Danny Elfman does. Uh, Danny Elfman does a score, but they just did uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, he does it. I think he does it every year. Yeah, at the Hollywood. But Bowl. I think this one was special because it was like the 25th anniversary or something like that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, he got to sing and everything because he plays. Not a lot of people know he plays Jack Skellington. Definitely. Yeah. So that that was a. That was a cool one, but I do definitely. That's on my bucket list to see a score, a live score with the movie playing. And yeah. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, honestly, I think would be one of the best ones. And I missed out on my opportunity this year because they had a big celebration celebrating 30 years of that movie. Yeah. And uh, they had a big old thing at I think uh, the Wiltern at the Palladium. I don't remember. But all they did was uh, they had uh, you know clowns there and stuff like that, a big celebration, and they did the movie with the score, and it was awesome. Super so, happy. That is our top 25 movies for episode 25 of the Mindless Horror Podcast. And, yeah, I can't wait to, uh, in a couple weeks, we've got the one-year anniversary coming up. Definitely. Uh, in the meantime, though, while we get prepared for that and what's in store, um, I, I would I would just say, if you got your 25, put in the comments. We'd love to see them. Of course. I want to hear what you guys have to think about. Think. I want to hear what you guys have to say about your top 25 uh, and stuff like that. I'd love to read your guys' comments. And I know Samuel will jump on the channel and just, you know, read some of the comments if he gets uh, yeah. gets around to it. I'll text him about it and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, we'd love to see what you guys have to say about it. Um, so stuff like that. In the meantime, we have a lot in store for you for 2019. A Definitely. Lot. Uh, good, a lot of good content coming out. Uh, podcast gonna try to do them every week. Uh, we're gonna do. We announced we're doing one live stream at least every month. Yep. Uh, the first being the Exorcist, which is coming up, I think, this Sunday. Oh yeah, you said it was gonna be this weekend, so. I think it was the sixth, right? Yeah. Which is was it? Or no, I said the ninth, right? Whatever the Sunday is this week. But I mean, it's the Sunday of the past week, I guess, when this comes out. Or the thirteenth. I think it was the thirteenth. Oh, we can do it next weekend. That's fine. For the 13th? I don't remember. So I think I'm going to be gone the 6th. Yeah, you said you're going to be gone the 6th. So weekend. the 13th. That's when it's going to be. Uh, Sunday the 13th. So this this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a Sunday. Because <laughs> uh, we recorded this, like I think, what, on the 1st? Yeah. And the, today, when it came out, it was the 8th. So the 13th. This Sunday. The Exorcist. Special start time. 3 o'clock will be all right? Will that work? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, fine? I mean, I'm out of church at 11. So. Okay, so yeah, 3 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Nights of Horror, Sunday, January 13th, 2019. Live stream of The Exodus uh, should be good for the 45th anniversary. Definitely. Stop by, and we can talk again. I've, I've been getting a lot of comments lately for another live stream. Yeah. I guess everybody enjoyed the last one, so that's good. I know my sister wants to come back. And my sister wants to come back. Eddie and... Uh, one of my fans, Steven, were going at it in the comics a couple times, which is pretty funny. They were arguing a lot. You know, fake, but, you know, it's funny. So, <laughs> yeah, a lot of store. I uh, got some uh, events going to be coming up, a lot of horror news to cover. Halloween Horror Night should be coming on. Horror Made Here should be coming back. Uh, Not Scary Farm. I'm going to try to hit a lot of the haunts this year and stuff like that. It should be good. Good year. I want to try to do a lot more skits uh, as far as some horror movies maybe. We'll see what happens. There's a lot of possibilities. And don't forget, you want to get me to a thousand subscribers. You want to get you want to get to a thousand subscribers this year because if we get to a thousand subscribers before Horror Nights, Sammy is going to Horror Nights. Yep. <laughs> it's gonna get. It's gonna be awesome. So thank you guys for listening to the Mindless Horror Podcast. Thank you guys for almost a year of the Mindless Horror Podcast. It's coming in about two weeks, so uh, look forward to that because uh, you never know. There might be some surprises in the store. I don't know. We haven't decided what we're gonna do yet, but we'll uh, figure it out. We'll figure it out for you guys. But until then, I'm Anthony. It's your boy, Sam. And we are the Mindless Horror Podcast Group. Thank you for listening, and we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.